So this wasn't today's scheduled upload. It was actually gonna be titled the first day of my last semester as computer science student. However, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but it is incredibly hard to make an interesting video out of syllabus week. Syllabus week is the first week in a college semester where basically you go in, you talk about the syllabus and a little bit of what the class is about, and then you go home. So I'm gonna replace that video with this video, one that has been requested many times since my day in the life of computer science video, and that is what is in my college bag as a computer science student. So here we go. Before I get into actually showing you what's in my bag, let me preface this by saying I am very simple when it comes to what I bring to school on a day-to-day -day basis, so just keep that in mind. This is the bag that I use every single day for school. It's nothing special, it's not one of those you know, very popular Herschel backpacks that every tech YouTuber seems to be using. It's not any special computer or photography or videography type backpack, because you know, I make videos and stuff. It is a simple Volcom brand backpack with one main zipper with a laptop slot inside of it, with one front zipper that kind of, you know, can hold pens or what have you, and then a front bottom zipper that I normally just put water bottles in. But the real kicker to this bag is how I got it. Now, this is a Volcom bag. Volcom, if you haven't heard of it, it they do like uh, casual wear for snowboarders, surfers, skaters, at least that's like the genre they target, so I guess it kind of fits me. If you can't tell, I, you know, wear a lot of surfing and snowboarding gear because, well, I've been surfing, surfing and snowboarding all my life. But Volcom teamed up with a surfboard manufacturing company out of California named Superbrand, and they went up to local shops all up and down the East Coast and held what I'll call a raffle at each one. So they were giving away like four or five Volcom products, and then one big product, a surfboard by Superbrand. Now mind you, this is a $600 surfboard, like many are, that you could potentially win for buying like a $5 item at the local shop. Here in Virginia Beach, they had it at WRV. So I went to WRV, I bought something, I was entered into the raffle, you know, they called someone's name for the first prize, called someone else's name for the second prize. I'm like, I'm not gonna win anything. The third prize was not this backpack, it was actually a, a towel, a Volcom branded towel with like, you know, the hands from that, that iconic image in the Sistine Chapel. And they called my name out. They drew my name out of the hat, they called it out, and I won that. But what they did was they took all of the names and put them back into the box right after they called them because they wanted to give those people a chance to win the big grand prize the surfboard. So right after the towel was the backpack, this backpack right here. I won two things in a row. They didn't say, oh, he already won something, so let's just take it back and uh, you know choose somebody else and just give him a chance to win the surfboard as well. They gave me the backpack as well. And then, you know, next prize went, next prize went, and then the surfboard came up. Remember when I said I brought Molly and my buddy Dylan? Well, before we got there, my buddy Dylan said to me, if I win the surfboard, you know, I think he thought like he never wins anything, I'll give it to you. Well, sure enough, they pulled Dylan's name out of the box. He won the surfboard. So essentially what we did was we like kind of shared it, but he doesn't really surf too much. So it's essentially my surfboard. Here's a picture of it. Yes, that blonde haired tan fella in the picture, that, that is me, beardless, younger, blonde me. But it is me and that is the surfboard that was given to my friend for essentially free. You know, he bought like a little five or $10 hat as well. And we basically made out of there like we went in and robbed a bank. We just like, okay, towel, backpack, two hats that we bought, and then a surfboard. I'll take it. We headed out and I've been using this backpack ever since. Now that that story time is out of the way, let's talk about what is actually inside of my old beaten up backpack and that is my old beaten up run through the mill mid 2012 MacBook Pro. And as you may be able to see on the back, I am missing one of these little foot pads back here and I am missing a screw up here. And all these stickers are on it, not because I like stickers on my laptop, but because there's a dent under here, a dent under here, a dent under here, a dent under here, and a dent under this one as well. I mean, you can even see this sticker, just how destroyed it is because, you know, sliding it in and out and then dropping it here and there. I try to take care of it, but I mean, you gotta use your equipment. If you don't use your equipment, you just baby it all the time. Can you really get, you know, it's full worth out of itself? I'm gonna answer that for you. No. But when it comes to computer science courses, for me, 
This works perfectly. I obviously do iOS development, so I need a MacBook Pro, but I am the minority when it comes to having any, any type of Apple device in my computer science courses. I mean, in any regular course, what you'll see is most of the students probably having some type of Apple device, an iPhone, a MacBook Pro, or you know whatever other Mac laptop that they use. But when it comes to computer science, ho ho ho, no, 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 you're not gonna see but me the anomaly, and maybe one or two other people in like a class of 30 that use a MacBook Pro. Not because they're bad, just because, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I do iOS development, so I need a MacBook Pro. I didn't know I was going to get, be getting into computer science when I bought this six years ago. And then everybody else in my computer science courses will have a Windows computer, hopefully running some type of Linux distro on it. If they're still running Windows, or if you're still running Windows, I mean, it gets the job done. That's what I'm running on this bag here. But for computer science, I mean, it's not really... Just look into Unix-based operating system, one of which being Mac OS, another of which being all of, you know, Linux distros, and you'll understand why you don't want to use Windows operating system and why you want to use either Mac OS or Linux. But as far as this 2012 MacBook Pro, I have replaced the hard disk drive, which was incredibly slow, with a solid state drive. For those of you who don't know the difference between a hard disk drive and a solid state drive, a hard disk drive is, I mean, just that. It looks for the information while spinning a disc. So if you know your computer bumps up against something, you shake it a little bit, it could screw it up. But a solid state drive is just that. It's a solid, it's in a solid state. So it doesn't spin or do anything crazy like that. It just hangs out until you need to find something. It finds it faster than the hard disk drive. And if you bump it around, you're fine. All right, let's move this out the way and move on to the next item. This next item is arguably more important than my computer, at least in 80% of my classes where I don't need to actually sit on my computer and program, and that is my Moleskin Planner. Now, in all honesty, I didn't realize that Moleskin had some super cult following. Molly actually bought this for me, my fiance, and I really, really like it. As you can see, on the left-hand side, we have all of the days and dates, and I can write down whatever I need to write down for that day. So if I need a to-do list, I'll write it in here. If I have something due that day, I'll write it in here. And then over here, I just keep whatever notes that I need. And since I'm a very forgetful human being, I need this planner because Otherwise, I'll just forget to do like all of my homework and then I'll fail all of my classes and that will not be good. So my basic recommendation for this is at the beginning of each week, whether that's a Saturday or a Sunday or a Monday for you, you ought to go to each of your classes, write down what you have due that week and what you need to do that week. Maybe write down two weeks in advance so you know like if something's due on the next Sunday or the next Monday or the next Tuesday so you can work on it the week before write it down in your planner so you don't forget. And I, I just run by this. And I also write down everything that I did on that day afterwards. I just, I have a whole entire system that I put into this planner. This actually is a 2017 version. I need to get a new one. On to item number three and four is my five subject notebook. Of course, most semesters run roughly four, five, maybe even six courses. So having a five section notebook is perfect. As you can see on this front page, what this used to be is my CS40, AKA Intro to Artificial Intelligence section. And as you can see written up here, it actually used to be for a different course. Basically what I do on those dividers that you just saw, I will write down whatever course I have and then write down all of my notes for that course in that section, obviously. But at the end of the semester, in the beginning of the next semester, I have all of these blank pages in every single section. There's probably only like three or four courses, probably like two courses that I had that completely filled one of these subjects. And then I still had all this blank paper. So what I do is I rip out those pages, throw them in the trash if that's necessary, or keep them if that's necessary. And then I'll cross out what my previous course was and then write down this semester's course. CS480 was actually last semester's course and then I don't know what was before that, maybe like uh, some type of, so I think it was a software engineering course, was the spring before that. So now that we're in spring 2018, that is gonna be probably my mobile app development course because I put my favorite and what I deem most important in the front. And let's just say I have a soft spot for mobile development. And now you're like, Forrest, that was only one item. I thought you said this was item three and four. Oh, I didn't forget it. My pen. 
you need to have a good pen or pencil. I like pens better because they encourage me to write a little bit more. They're just, you know, they're just some type of smooth touch to a pen that a pencil just doesn't have. And this one is very much marker-like. It is a Uniball Vision Fine Tip Pen with a blue ink. And it just, it, it, it is a pen, but it kind of writes like a marker. So you're not gonna have any of those dead spaces like some other pens have, where it's really annoying and you have to go and write the same thing over and over again. Especially for me, since in all honesty, there are pens out there that are made for righties, and I am a lefty, so I'm just kind of screwed. And maybe it's not the pen, maybe it's just the English language is written for a righty. So certain letters, when a lefty writes them, they just don't, don't show up like they need to. That was louder than I thought. So item number four that I usually keep on my keys, but I also throw my keys in my backpack on my way to class, is a USB drive. Now, I have no idea where that USB drive is. Luckily, I don't have any important information on it. So what is the next best thing, and maybe even a better thing? <sighs> that would be an external hard drive or some type of travel drive. So this one isn't necessarily made for traveling. I, I was about to punch it, but that would probably be bad because like I just said, it's not made to get beaten up like some other external hard drives are. But when you need to have some type of information converted from one computer to another, maybe you need to have a presentation displayed, or maybe you need to test your code in front of the class and you can't just hook up your computer, you need a flash drive or some type of way to do that. And for me, it is an external hard drive when I can't find that flash drive, like, like today. And also this one, I'm not gonna drop on the floor, I'm gonna set it on the floor, but I'll make a, oh, oh, that was in the floor, that was my computer. And now onto the last item, and that would be headphones. Now, in all honesty, I used to carry around big headphones like this, they were Skull Candies, these are Audio Technicas, but I like to be a little bit more inconspicuous when it comes to my headphones. I'm just holding these up here for props. When it comes to what headphones I use on a daily basis, that would be these. They are the Beats by Dre Power Beats. The main reason I use these is because any type of earbud, it doesn't matter if it's something like an AirPod earpod or if it has an actual fitting on the end, they just never stay in my ear. So when it comes to these, they have this little hook that hooks on the top of your ear and then there's no way for these to fall off, to fall out, to fall to the floor. And that's really what I need. I will wear these on the walk to class. I will wear these at the gym on campus. Or, I mean, you could wear these in class and not even be noticed if you have long hair or if you are wearing a hood. But you didn't hear that from me. And when it comes to performance of these headphones, they're not the best. I really wish they would get louder because if I'm in the gym and there are people around or they're playing music in the speakers, I... It, I can hear them just fine, but I like to blast my music. I, my fiance can attest when I'm driving around in the car, I blast my music. If I'm wearing headphones, I want to be able to blast my music, and these don't get that loud, at least for me. And that would be my main complaint when it comes to these. Whenever I turn these on, they pair up to my phone because I've already done that once. And beyond that, they're just like any other Bluetooth headphones, but I can wear them around my neck like so, and they won't get lost. <laughs> Anyways, guys. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are still hanging around to the end, be sure to show me that you like this video and like it right down there, as well as hit that subscription button right down there. I would love to have you here. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Peace.